Okay, you guys, I am just shooting a really quick rudimentary video for you with the craziest camera setup you've ever seen. So there's a lot to know about painting, but a lot of it is common sense. We're gonna use a basic palette of five colors, so cadmium yellow, cadmium red, ultramarine blue, carbon black, and I think it's titanium white. And you can see that I've got a charcoal pencil, three different size brushes, a palette with my gray paint that I mixed up for my underpainting on it, my candy heart, and a glass of water, or a jar. So, I've also got a paper towel here handy. So what I've done is taped my edges, just like you guys do, of this cardstock. I mix together black and white, always put the darker color into the light or you end up with way too much paint. And I painted my, my underpainting is what we're going to call it. So that's not your background color, that's just literally the underpainting or the painting under the background color, okay? And then you can use it to your advantage to help you judge values and you can let some of it show through and it's just a great way to go. Then I took my charcoal pencil and I drew the heart shape on it along with the shadow. I did not put the words on it because if I put the words on it, then I'm going to be painting over them. I also chose a yellow candy because those can be the trickiest to create shadows with because they turn kind of a green color and that may be fine with you but we're gonna try to make more of a purple type shadow all right so here I go I'm going to get the biggest paintbrush that will do the job because that's just more efficient and I'm going to take some yellow paint and some white paint and I've got these little cartons for you guys and I'm going to try to mix up a value that I like and paint it on here with a bit of texture. You always want to use enough water to make the paint flow the way you want it to. You may want it to sort of scumble, which is sort of break across the top, or you might want it to glide perfectly. And that's just a matter of personal choice. All right, so. A flat brush like what I've got here rather than a round brush will help me get a nice straight edge. And then I'm going to go ahead and paint the sides and notice that you don't need a whole lot of paint. And whatever you squeeze out, you've got to do something with. So you've either got to save it or sadly throw it away, which is terribly wasteful, um, or use it in some way. So don't create more of paint than you think you can use in one session. All right, so I'm going to kind of just put that in there. And I'm looking at my candy and the shadow side is more over here. So I'm gonna mix up a little bit of purple. And that's redder than I want, so a little more blue. And then back into my white. And that's kind of a nice purple. And this paint, because I didn't use much of it at all, is fairly dry. So what I'm doing right now is called dry brushing. And that looks very contrasty, right? But I want it to because I want to sort of exaggerate my highlights. Now, I'm, and I sort of feather it at the end. I'm thinking that that is probably a little bit browner of a shadow than I want, but I'm not sure. So I think I'm going to just kind of leave it. I'm going to rinse off my brush. And when your water starts looking kind of milky, like it's got a thickness to it, that's when you want to change it. Um, but you don't have to get up and change it every time you wash your brush, right? And so I'm going to just feather a little bit of that over the top to kind of blend my shadow with my base color, sort of like that. And then my heart across the top is not all one color. It is, but it isn't. If you look closely, there's sort of subtle variations in it. So I'm gonna wash my brush again. And it looks to me, just in the lighting in this room, like there is a little bit of light around the edges. And so I'm going to add some white. 
and I'm just using this piece of plexiglass as a palette. As you saw in our videos, um, Wayne Tebow used just a paper plate, and that works fine too. Typically, just want something that's not distracting so that you can see the colors. So I'm putting kind of another layer on here. I like the texture in there, but you want to be consistent, so you don't want some textured and some not. Now, acrylic paint does this sort of frustrating thing, which is that it will pick itself up, you know, like you'll brush across and it'll start picking up sort of like that. And if that starts happening to you, sometimes dabbing the paint on with what we call a pouncing motion will help um, because you're not streaking across it. But sometimes just letting it dry will also help. So I'm kind of using that gray underneath there to my advantage to give some subtle sort of value variation. And artists paint two different ways. Sometimes you mix on your palette and apply the color you've mixed. Sometimes you mix directly on your painting, which is what I'm doing now when I applied that sort of brownish purple color. Um, that was an example, obviously, of mixing on the palette and then applying it. And if you've never painted before, you know, you'll find that you have a style even if you didn't know that you did. Um, and I really want more white contrast. So if you try to put a layer on top of wet paint, it's going to blend in. But if you can make yourself be patient and wait till it dries a little or hit it with the blow dryer, you'll find that it'll sit on top a little easier. So I sort of want to do that. And then over here, I want the white to blend in a bit more, I think, sort of like I've got it. And remember what Wayne Tebow said about all of his paintings being fairly abstract. So when you look really closely, your painting might be kind of a series of shapes and stripes. Um, and some unexpected things might happen, like that white sort of stuck there when I didn't really expect it to. Kind of like that, just sort of blending it in um, a bit more like that. So there you go. That's the quick and dirty. And then I would put my text across the top. Um, and so I'm going to let that dry a little bit while I address the shadow. But actually, no, not the shadow. I'm going to put... Um, a background color in because remember I said that the um, the gray is not really my background color and I think I'm just gonna go with yeah kind of like this just kind of a really pale purple and I'm gonna actually kind of scrub the paint on um, I want some texture and some expressiveness and so I'm just Kind of turning my brush this way and that. I don't want it to be um, sloppy, however, so I'm paying attention to what I'm doing. Um, but I am sort of scrubbing, you may can hear that noise, and coming up very close, which is what a flat brush allows you to do better than a round one. You know, there's really no rules. Um, I mean, if we were learning how to paint classically like the old masters, there's rules but we're not, and um, like I wouldn't want to leave something like that probably. Um, I probably would want to blend it in like I'm doing, and I think you probably saw in the video of um, Wayne Tebow painting that he does an overhand grip like this, and that's fun too. Sort of experiment around with what works for you. All right, then I want to put my shadow in. So typically a shadow is the complementary color of your table surface plus blue. So my table surface is sort of purple. So it's going to be yellow plus blue. Now that's going to get a little green, but let's see what happens. I like that. So my shadow, ooh, I really like that. So my shadow does this, it's almost like a teal. And your shadow doesn't have to be perfect, but it has to be convincing. And typically where something sits 
right on a table. There's a darkest shadow is right there. So I'm going to sort of come along the bottom with a little bit more saturated blue, kind of like that. And I think I want even more. I'm a little afraid of getting um, too much on there with this huge brush. And I do have a smaller brush. You always want to sort of surround yourself um, with all the tools you need so you're not frustrated getting, having to keep getting up. Um, and I think that's pretty good. And keep in mind, you guys, I'm doing this super quickly. I'm going to come back on top of that. Got a little carried away with my shadow there. All right, so sort of like that. I'm really kind of liking this. Now I'm going to grab my charcoal and I'm going to see that's actually still a little bit wet, but I think I can probably do this. So you're going to write your text. Well, there you go. Um, in perspective so that it looks like it follows the logic of the surface. And I'm actually having to kind of um, carve in here. And the letters get a little narrower as they go toward the back. So if you were doing this, I would ask that you just wait till it got dry, but I don't want to keep you waiting. So now I'm going to get a skinny brush, so I would never try to do the words on top with um, the wide brush I was painting. And I think I'm going to just go with purple with a little bit of white in it because, um, and this is again a flat brush, because I want to keep all these colors fairly unified. And I'm not loving that brush. It's got some bristle issues. But I'll just keep going here so I don't waste your time. And so that's sort of my first layer, but the letters need to be modeled just like everything else does, meaning that they're usually not just one color. And if you look at the candies, they're kind of, um, they're kind of broken up across the surface, so they don't need to be too perfect, but they also don't want to look like you just slapped them on there. So I'm going to refine it just a little bit. And I just wrote the word text because that's the generic word for words, right? And also because texting nowadays is so much a part of our lives. Um, I'm going to take a little bit of yellow, actually, and kind of just dust it over the top. And... I may even take a little bit of white because the, you know, the light hits across those letters just like it does the surface of the candy. And you're the artist, so you kind of have to make decisions based on what you see and the effect that you want. So I think I'm going to do that. And then I'm going to take my tape off. I say I am. To show you a little more clearly what the values and colors look like. If you'll bear with me for a second. And so that really didn't take me very long, and it will take you a little longer if you haven't painted before, just to kind of get the feel for it, but then you'll be all set. All right, thank you for your attention.